All right, now we've got some trig functions. So find the total area between these two, and the interval is zero to pi. So first, I'm going to graph it. So one of them is sine of 2x and cosine of x. And then the interval is going to go from 0 to pi. And sine and cosine range between positive 1 and negative 1. So the y values can be positive 1 and negative 1. And then graph that. So the first thing that I notice is that the graph is symmetric. If you look at that side, looking at between the red one and the blue one, and then you look at that side, it's symmetric. So what I could do is integrate just from 0 to pi over 2, and then double the answer. Now even with that, I'm going to have to set it up as two integrals. One where it's between the cosine function on the top and the sine function on the bottom. And then at this point where they intersect, I'll then need to switch and go the, cos the sine function on the top and the cosine function on the bottom. Well, then I need to find out where they intersect right here. So just so that I don't forget, I'm gonna go from zero to pi over two and then double the answer. And one of them was the sine function. And the red one was the cosine function. So my graph that I just drew right there is supposed to be that right there. Okay, now find out where they intersect. So where does sine of 2x equal cosine of x? For this side, we should use a trig identity, which is 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. Then when does that equal cosine of x? We could then subtract this cosine, move it to the left side, 2 and sine of x times cosine of x, and then subtract cosine of x. The next thing to do, factor out a cosine. So it's going to be cosine of x times 2 sine of x minus 1. Then set each factor equal to 0. This one's going to say, when does cosine equal 0? With this one, you could move the 1 to the other side and divide by 2. So in other words, when does sine equal a half? And this is pi over 2, so I didn't draw it very accurately. Right here is probably pi over 4. So this is like pi over 6 or pi over 8. Let's see. So if you do cosine inverse of 0, that's going to be 1.572, or in other words, half of pi. So this is going to be x equals pi over 2. And then that is not the solution we're looking for, because that is this endpoint over here. What about this one? Take sine inverse of 1 half, and then divide that by pi, change it to a fraction. It's pi over 6. So that makes sense to me. If this is pi over 2, then this pi over 6, yeah, that seems to make sense. So the red one, that's the cosine graph. The blue one, 
That's the sine graph. So now we get to do two integrals. One, where we find this area, and for that we'll need to do the cosine minus the sine, and that goes from zero to pi over six. So one integral is going to be integrate from zero to pi over six, and then the top one is cosine, minus the bottom one is sine of 2x. And then we need to find this area. So that's going to be integrating from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And in this case, the top one is sine and the bottom one is cosine. And then don't forget that that was actually only half of the graph, so all of this needs to be doubled. And then for finding the actual antiderivatives, so the antiderivative for cosine is sine, the antiderivative for sine is negative cosine, which is actually going to cancel out this negative. And then because of the chain rule, we're going to need to divide by 2. So if we were taking the derivative, you would multiply by 2 because of the chain rule. Because we're doing the opposite of derivative, you do the opposite, you divide by 2. And then this gets evaluated from 0 to pi over 6. And then for this one, the antiderivative for sine is negative cosine of 2x, and this one also needs to be divided by 2 because of the chain rule. The antiderivative for negative cosine will be negative sine. And then this needs to be evaluated from pi over 6 to pi over 2. And everything is multiplied by 2. Okay, so everything is still multiplied by 2, and then it's going to be sine of pi over 6 plus, when you put the pi over 6 in here for x, then it's going to reduce to be a pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 3, and then that's divided by 2. Now substitute the 0, so minus sine of 0 and also minus cosine of 0 divided by 2. Now I need to do this one. So then it's going to go, let's see, I don't think I have enough room right here, so I'm going to have to say 2 times all of this and then plus, so that's this plus. Now start working on this. So when you substitute the pi over 2, the 2's are going to cancel, and it's going to leave cosine of pi. So negative cosine of pi, and that's divided by 2. And then this minus sine of pi over 2. And then subtract when you substitute pi over 6. Well, when you subtract these negatives, they're actually going to turn into positives. So plus, and when you substitute pi over 6, it's going to reduce to be cosine of pi over 3. And then that one is divided by 2. And then this negative cancels, so it's going to be plus sine pi over 6 and then put brackets around that. So I was just looking to see, is there anything that I could simplify or should I just type it in the calculator? I think we should just type it in the calculator.
Okay, so I already have enough parentheses and brackets to worry about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave off this two for now, just do the inside part, and then I'll multiply it by two. So we've got sine of pi, not h, pi over six, plus there is a one half, so I'm just gonna rewrite that as one half times cosine of pi over three. Sine of zero is zero. So that part, I don't need to do, that's just zero. Cosine of zero is one, so that means this is minus a half. And then minus cosine of pi, and that gets divided by two, and then minus sine of pi over two, and plus cosine of pi over three, and that gets divided by two, and plus sine pi over six. Wow, after all of that work, it just equals a half. Now remember, I haven't done this part, so I need to multiply by two. That is amazing. After all of that, the answer is just a one. Huh, fascinating. Equals one.